Hi everyone, welcome to another Asus Transformer Prime video. This video essentially doesn't have that much to do with the Asus Transformer Prime other than to see how the tablet copes with a certain device which I'm going to re review which is this. It is Google Currents, a news aggregator um, that's come out for the Android device which essentially um, gives you a couple of options to choose different news uh, topics and then choose from websites where you can get news which is then presented uh, not from a website but in a tablet friendly fashion so let's go straight into it and uh, as we can see straight away I have already tailored this tablet to a lot of technology websites which are all listed here and uh, news stories from each tablet sort of sync across here in a type of a picture format so you can then press on one to highlight one of the options um, you choose these by going into the library which is up here and choosing one of your options here uh, I've gone for mostly science and tech stuff and then choosing some of the options so I've chosen CNET, Android Central uh, but there are also many others that you can choose from also quite useful is the option to choose um, anything from your Google Reader account so if you've got any useful RSS feeds that you've already set up in Google Reader it will also add them to the main page which is here. Uh, one of the things that it does do which is a bit of a criticism is if you can see down here this is the refresh button uh, which will sync presumably so it's now syncing this does seem to take an age when it's syncing and you're never quite sure when it's finished I'm not sure if that's because it's trying to download all the pictures but it does seem to take an exceedingly long time to sync uh, and the moment the sync is still on, but I'm not sure if it actually has syncs for stories. There doesn't seem to be any action going on on the tablet. So uh, while it is doing that, while I think it's syncing, um, let's have a look at some of the options. You can choose accounts, text size, which I'll come, into, come on to it in a little moment. Syncing, um, as you can see, it can sync in the background. Um, you can sync images for offline use, and uh, quite a few options there, which is quite nice and moving on to uh, we have help, feedback and report abuse so just really some ways of listing the different issues which is okay as you can see now I can just see that it is syncing and look how long it's taking to uh, sync just CNET once it's done that, as soon as it's finished syncing that we'll actually go into CNET and see how it looks so it's starting Android now, so let's uh, Android Central so let's go into CNET uh, as you can see each um, page is displayed slightly differently so it's kind of like bespoke news information that's presented to you in the case of CNET we have obviously the big advertisement here but then we have um, all the different topics listed on the side here if I press on one of them go to latest news then it kind of gets to the um, what I call uh, what I consider a very nice display um, with a picture and then a little bit of text and this is a very much a tablet friendly type of display which I really like and I've seen in other apps which I'm going to cover a little later so we'll just choose one to kick us off here and it will show us uh, the information there um, one of the things that I'm not too keen on is the sort of double display uh, so we've got two sort of columns on the tab on the landscape looks okay although the text is a bit long if I tilt it to, it to portrait fashion um, then it, again it looks a bit like a newspaper but I just think those columns are a bit too wide uh, ideally what I would like is for the columns to stay the same width when I increase the text size however when I do that if I now change the text size to large done and then if I go back into a new story the text size hasn't changed on this main display page but if I then go into a and page as you can see now it's pretty unus unusable the page now, it's, scrolling has gone completely wrong um, the text is far too big, it's gone from one extreme to the other and as you can see it's sort of cutting off the column there so effectively you can only use this with a small or medium sized text but not to um, put too much criticism on it the display, I love this um, sort of front end display of the news items and going in, uh, it's a pretty 
attractive reading experience. So sometimes it does seem to put the men sort of like links to other articles right in the middle of the article, which I don't like. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just on. I'm not sure if that's on every um, news. I'm not sure if that's on every new source. If we just have to look at and and gadget very quickly, we'll go into a new story there. Again, pretty useful, and I'm not, I suppose on that one it looks as though news articles at the end. So I think it's very much tailored to different websites how they decide to display their information. I'll just try one more. Try Mashable and look at the new stories then. Again, the front end very nice, and then you get into the article. And again, it's just a little bit sort of clunky, it's just not quite what how, how you'd want it to look. A couple of gaps and stuff, but again, very usable and readable um, to use. I'll just um, give you an example of one of the ones I've ch chosen from Google Reader. So this Charlie Brooker one here is not from an actual source, uh, a library as such, um, but everything's still displayed absolutely fine. And um, it's a pretty reliable RSS feed. Um, but, uh, as you can see on this one, there's no pictures on this. So it's not tailored as much as a um, actual Google Currents source, but it's still perfectly usable. Uh, so, in terms of its general use, I think it's it's quite good. Um, just one more thing. This is like the these are the things that are trending, so if you want to sort of go outside your own sources, you'll see some of the stories which are trending here. And if, if I choose one, I get a little bit more information. And then if I actually press on the headline, it'll go again into the actual article itself. But sometimes the articles aren't displayed that well. This is not a full article. It's just like the header of the um, article, and I'd have to see the original article by pressing on there, which looks as if it opens up uh, a, the website dedicated to it, and obviously you probably want to have seen that in the browser anyway. So it kind of defeats its own objects once you get to that stage. But yeah, it's pretty good. Um, the one thing I like, or I prefer in a news aggregator, is something that pulls articles from lots of different sources and gives you the option to read uh, like the most popular stories from different sources rather than having to go through choose CNET and then choose Android Central and then choose um, Gizmodo and look through the stories that way. I like uh, something that would just pile them all together and there is an app that does this unfortunately it's not available on the Android yet. It is available oddly enough on WebOS the uh, a almost dead defunct operating system. It's called Zite. And what this does is it aggregates new stories and learns your reading habits. You choose a couple of sections, so a couple of sort of general topics. I've chosen gadgets, gaming, technology, smartphones, etc. And then it pulls stories from lots of different sources and then chunk blobs them all together. So uh, as you can see, I've got a few options here for different new stories, all display very nicely. And then if I choose one, it brings up the new story in uh, one column, which it, admittedly here the text is small, but it's very easy to change that. So I'll just put the text in a larger font so it's much easier to read. And then I can read through the article. And with these options here on the um, right hand side, I can actually say whether I enjoyed the article and then recommend more articles from a particular website and author. So it's learning all the time what articles you like to read and I had this on the iPad for about two or three months and it was actually very good. It did um, bring together lots of articles that I was very interested in reading and this is the thing that I want to get on the Android but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be available. So Zeit, which is available for the iPad and the uh, WebOS, needs to go on this and then Google Currents would have a pretty strong competitor. So that's my review of Google Currents. I hope you find that interesting. If you have any questions, please do ask me. And I'll see you again in another video very soon. Thanks for watching, everyone.